So Colin, what are we starting with? Let's have right. a look. Um, just maybe very quickly before we go through, um, because this is important when we're going to look at the functioning of the eye, is the parts where light has to go through. And we call it the lens system. Remember, also know those four parts. It is the cornea, the aqueous humor, the lens, the vitreous humor, and those four parts, that is where light has to go through so that it can reflect and um, clear vision and can be seen here on the fovea or the yellow spot. So let's start with accommodation. First of all, you have to know a definition. And accommodation has to do with the shape of the lens. Many books point out that it is the adjustment of the eye. But I think to be quite safe, please make sure that you talk about the adjustment of the lens because it's the shape of the lens mm. that has to change. The shape or the thickness yes. of the lens. And accommodation is about the lens, as you've rightly yes. said. It's not about the eye. It's mm. about the lens. And it's, in other words, changes in the lens that enable you to see a clear picture from a distance or close by. So that is what accommodation is all about. So let's look at this. Now, when we look at any object that is far or further than six meters away from the eye, we normally say that the eye is unaccommodated. And when the eye is then focusing on objects, there are three things that you need to point out. And the three things is what is happening with the lens. Because remember what we said? Accommodation is about the shape of the lens. So the lens is kept in position there with the suspensory ligaments. And when they become taut or when they constrict, then the lens, they pull the lens flatter. But the suspensory ligaments and the ciliary muscle, they work antagonistically. So when the suspensory ligaments, they constrict, then the ciliary muscle, they relax. And the effect of that is that the tension of the lens increases and it becomes flatter. Right, can I show you a picture how it works? Um, could we have the paper please? There you are. You see, if we look at it, and this is important why Colin said you should also have an idea what it looks like from the front. Mm -hmm. This is the ciliary body. Now inside the ciliary body, there is a muscle. And when it relaxes, when it relaxes, it moves away it becomes bigger when it comes when the ciliary muscle constricts it becomes smaller in other words constriction right constriction relaxing constriction relaxing now what you've got here is the lens there you've got the lens and there you've got your ciliary body with a ciliary muscle. I'm not going to write it out, you know what I'm talking about. If it moves away, these suspensory ligaments becomes taut. In other words, because the ciliary body pulls on the, on the ligaments and then the lens becomes flatter. There you can see the lens is flat if there is a pull on these ligaments. And the opposite happens, as Colin will explain now, when we want to do, we want closer vision. So this is now for further vision, um, the different steps. Have, let's have a look at our slide. Right, this is the next one. What happens with the lens when we look at objects that are closer than six meters away from the eye? Then the opposite happens. Can you see, if I can just go back, then you can see, look at the shape of the lens. As Lorraine has explained to you, it's flatter. And there you see it is rounder or more convex. And it's the implication of a rounder lens. That is important and that is why we can um, see things that is closer than six meters away. Remember, as the tension on the lens decreases because of the suspense, can you see the suspensory ligaments? Those really th uh, thread-like no, structures they're slack, there, yeah. you can see because they have slackened. And the ciliary muscle within the ciliary body, that has now contracted. 
and that causes the lens to become more rounded or convex and that means that light rays can be bent more now so that a very clear image can be seen on the retina mm -hmm. and it's more specific on the yellow spot. Yeah, spot the and I phobia. think with the next picture you will see exactly what is happening with the focusing of the light rays. There on the left, you've got the picture for distant vision. You can see the ciliary body, because the muscle is relaxed, is far away from the lens, so that there's a pull on the ligaments and the ligaments pull on the lens, the lens is flat. There you can see the ciliary body, the muscles contract, moves closer to the lens, no pull on the ligaments, the lens is much more rounded or as we say biconvex. This is for distant vision. Now the cornea as well as the lens, those two are the main structures that will bend light rays so that they can focus and get a clear picture on the retina. When you look at distant vision, you need a thicker, a more biconvex lens yes. to also get focus on the retina. And when you can't see properly, when a picture is out of focus, it's because your lens cannot um, bend the light rays properly for a picture to be formed on the retina. That's usually when you have to wear glasses or contact lenses, or some people go for laser. Um, surgery to correct the problem. And Lorraine, I think it's important that learners should know that when they are being given those two diagrams in an exam paper, then they need to identify and which one is for closer vision and which one is for mm. far. And, and I think with a question to the type of question that one gets, the moment they talk about a distance mm. with the eye, for instance they say the bowler is running towards the batter, then you know it's about this guy coming closer, closer, closer. It's distance. Or they say you need to look at a far away object, or you see a car traveling towards you. It is about distance. Then you must know it's about accommodation of the eye. Accommodation, shape of the lens to focus the light rays on the retina. What is the role of the retina? It is the photoreceptor. And that is where the um, stimulus force, that is the picture, the focused picture, that is turned into an impulse that is interpreted by your brain. Hmm. Okay, there was a question about that, so that's why I just sort of quickly mentioned. Okay, so remember, yeah. you must be able to identify that and look at the shape of the lens to see more specifically whether it is far vision or for near vision. Yeah, and we don't uh, unfortunately have much time to mm -hmm. go into it. But something that you have to look at is um, what happens when you can't see a picture properly. If you can only see well at a distance, that's where we are now mm -hmm. at our age, when we have to read like this, then... Uh, um, you have distant vision and when you can only see when you hold the book close to you, you are myopic. You, own, you are nearsighted. Farsighted, nearsighted. And it can be a problem. So you need spectacles. I can't read close by anymore, so I need sp reading specs to be able to see. What do they have to do? They, my eye, can only, at, at this stage, give me distant vision. It cannot accommodate anymore. So I need specs to help me with that. And you need to go and look in your textbook. Which type of lens is used to correct farsightedness and which type of lens is used to correct nearsightedness? Yeah. Okay, and why? And maybe some other diseases, come and look at it. Mine, for instance, I also have a pair of glasses and mine is for astigmatism. So um, go and Which look at it. Which is the surface, read. uneven That's surface right. of the eye. That is where the cornea yeah. and the lens, the, that shape yeah. has, is no more rounded, but it has mm. flattened. So um, go and look up and read. But this whole issue of accommodation is very important, Matrix, to go and make sure that you know exactly what's going on. Apart from all the other things that we've said.